I thought I would talk about VAR today and what's happened over the last few days. I think you could argue it's been one of the worst weekends in terms of bad examples of how we're using VAR and how it's actually detracting from the game more than it's benefiting it. It's such a difficult topic that there's a lot of people that don't like VAR. There's a lot of people that absolutely love it. There's people like me that truly believe that the technology is fantastic and we should use it, but the way we're using it is wrong. And I'm a firm believer, okay, and this is how I'm going to start this video off. We should not be using it right now because we can't. We clearly can't get it right. So for those of you wondering, you know, what's happened, um, over the weekend, we've had some very questionable, <laughs> no, actually, it's not even questionable, factually incorrect decisions being made that are really affecting the outcomes of games. Brighton robbed of a win against Palace with a goal that was absolutely legal. They drew the lines incorrectly with an offside call. Hey, at least they got the lines. Um, I'll get onto that in a moment. But they drew the lines on the wrong player and it was a human error. They've admitted it. You can see here we've got a tweet from the PGMO account. Um, they've basically gone to the clubs affected. Arsenal got affected by this against Brentford. Their equaliser, very clearly offside. But this time they forgot to draw the lines, um, which is incredible. Uh, we also saw in the Chelsea-West Ham game, West Ham at home, of course, big, big game for both clubs. And there was a blatant handball. I've got an image of it coming up in this video, uh, which wasn't given, despite being checked. Um, I just wanted to talk about it because it's actually quite depressing. And I'm not just talking about this as an Arsenal fan. I'm talking about this as a football fan. Someone that's watched the majority of my life watching football is pre-VAR when, you know, you celebrate goals when they go in no matter what. There was no, <gasps> is it going to be ruled out? You know, and, and yes, I've got used to VAR over the years. Yes, there's been some great examples of it, um, but there have been some shockers. So first of all, I've got quite a few things that I've picked up on that I want to show you guys in this video. First of all, we've got Kevin Campbell talking about it. Uh, let me just turn this up a little bit. The head to come out and say that he's forgotten to, to, to draw the line. It, it's, it's either one or two things. You don't forget to draw the line. That's, that's part of your job. So it's either you deliberately don't do it or you've forgotten. And if you've forgotten to do it, you're not fit, you're not fit to do the job. It's, it's so perfect. Well done, Kevin Campbell. This is ineptitude at the highest level. This is not, um, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and say that Lee Mason, who was on VAR for the arsenal Brentford game, I don't think he's done this on purpose, okay? But he has apparently not drawn the lines. And I, I think they're trying to, the PGM old team are probably trying to say, look, he, he just didn't do it out, out of a decision, basically. They haven't said that he forgot, that he just, he didn't do it. That, that could mean that he didn't think it was required, that he cleared it elsewhere. Whatever the case may be, it can only be two things. He's either completely forgotten to do it or he has decided not to do it because of <laughs> dodgy reasons, let's say. And I really don't believe it's that. I, I have to hope so anyway. He has forgotten to do his job. His only job as the guy on the VAR to check if something is legal or not. Put the lines down. It's a, it, it's technology. You, you don't have to draw the lines yourself with a freaking ruler and a pencil. It's, it's mind blowing that we're the biggest and best league in the world, supposedly, yet we genuinely do have an issue with our referees all the time. It is a constant battle. And this is a big point that I want to make because I said pre-VAR, I've watched a lot of football in my lifetime. I'm 30 now, okay? I'm getting old. The majority of my life has been watching football pre-VAR. Yes, it was annoying when decisions went, went against you. It was so frustrating. Think the Lampard goal. It wasn't given when it crossed the line by a freaking meter. Things like that happened rarely, but enough to be a nuisance that we felt like we needed help from something like VAR. And of course, technology wasn't around then. It sounds so old, doesn't it? But I preferred that 
genuinely sitting here as a, a huge football fan. Football is my life, genuinely. Like YouTube, family, football, all those three. Th it's just, it's all I care about, right? And I enjoyed football more six, seven, eight years ago before VAR was introduced. And do you know what it is, right? It's not, we've got to make the distinction. It's not VAR that's the issue. It's how we use the technology. In some leagues, I think the Bundesliga in the World Cup, you know, well, there were some dodgy ones in the World Cup, but in general, in some other countries, it works pretty well. They do it quickly. Their officials seem to do the job. And of course, there are going to be some issues. You can't be 100% perfect all the time. But no, 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 no. You can't simply forget to draw lines. That That is not human error. That's just stupidness. And you should be, you should be sacked. You should be fired on the spot. Okay, but VAR in its current state makes the game worse, in my opinion, of course. I preferred football before. Yes, it's so annoying when goals were given when there was clearly a handball. But do you know what, guys? You would be able to sit there as a human and, and say, look, the referee has got that massively wrong. But do you know what? He's got a very difficult job. He's on the field. It's live. It's fast. He's missed something. And you, you kind of just move on from it, unless it's a super famous error, like we've seen, you know, red cards being given to the wrong players and that Lampard thing and against Germany. Things like that, you obviously will always remember. But I swear there is more of that, more of the arguments, more of the, the constant battles online. And there's more of it now than there was before. There is more injustices being talked about now than there was before. So what what's the point? What's the point? <laughs> Um, Lee Mason, as I said, was the guy who was in charge of the Brentford and Arsenal game. Um, and it, do you know what? It's, it's funny because last season he was, um, no, sorry, not last season. Cause we're going to talk about, uh, John Brooks here, who was a problem last year as well. But Lee Mason was also in charge of the old Trafford game with Arsenal and he wrongly disallowed Martinelli's goal. So remember that. But the reason I bring that up is because we've got another... I mean, this is incredible, really. John Brooks, who was um, at fault last season for... Um, which game was it? At least try to remember. I think it was Newcastle Palace. You, you might have to just double-check that yourselves, guys. Um, made a massive error. He has now made another error this weekend, and he has been dropped. Not fired. I just... I, just, I, I need to specifically mention this, guys. He has not been sacked. If you go to work tomorrow and make an absolute howler, something that costs your company a lot of money, you're going to be fine, okay? You're just, you're just going to be dropped for a couple of games while everyone doesn't... Just everyone, shh, no one talk about it. How is he not fired? He's been dropped, okay? Now, this, this, <laughs> this is the decision that happened yesterday. I cannot believe that this is actually insane. So th this is Brighton scoring a perfectly legit goal. The ball goes through here. He has drawn the line on the wrong defender. How? <laughs> How? How does that happen? So he's been dropped. We're waiting to hear if Lee Mason has been dropped. But what we're seeing here is continuous mistakes. Continuous mistakes. And I'm glad that he's been dropped, but he should be fired. This is a sackable offence. It really is. And this is what Dermot Gallagher had to say about it. I would suggest um, corrective training. You know, somebody to speak to him and say, look, this is the process. The process goes from A to Z, if you like. You don't go from A to X and then forget the last two letters. You've corrective training. The damage is already done. How about we employ referees that are competent and can see? <laughs> they can use their eyes. What, why isn't this happening in other leagues all the time? Why, is it, why does it seemingly only happen in England in arguably the biggest league? You could say, OK, that this error uh, against Arsenal with, with the Brentford goal could cost us the league title. Obviously, there's so much more football to play and we could still lose it normally. But it's the mental torture that you're putting Arsenal through right now. The fact that we've dropped two points is not the end of the world, but mentally... That has a huge effect on the players, knowing that City are a bit closer now than they should be. It's injustices. It's not for the first time either. I mean, you could say this is bias, obviously, because I'm an Arsenal fan, but 
every single time that we've dropped points this season, it has been through some bad officiating. You could argue against Manchester United at Old Trafford, um, we still would have lost that game, of course. And you could argue <clears throat> against Brentford, they had a perfectly good goal, although the whistle was blown and players stopped moving. But they did, they did put it in the back of the net and it wasn't a foul. So there, there are obviously ifs and buts, but, and it's a big but, um, why is it every single time that Arsenal drop points, we have a moment in the game, which is so questionable. So this, this is the goal that they just scored um, to equalise against us at the weekend. This was against Southampton when we drew. Jesus threw on goal. This was checked by VAR wasn't given as a penalty. I'm sorry, you, you, you're going to throw him to the ground. Okay, fine. This was the disallowed goal against Manchester United where Erdegaard won the ball off Erdegaard and they came out and said that was not a foul. It shouldn't have been given as a foul. Martinelli obviously went on and scored. We go 1-0 up. I think we go on to win the game. I really do. We were playing so well that day. This was against Everton recently. I mean, you could say this is a little bit of a stretch, uh, but Mopai clearly cutting Gabriel's leg from underneath him uh, as the ball was coming towards him. I've seen those given. That's one all if we get the penalty and score it. Changes the game completely. And this was against Newcastle. Gabriel, again, being completely manhandled in the box. You've just got to ask yourself, we're being, we're being very unlucky. Is there something going on here? <laughs> Is there something going on here? This was the foul that led to the Brentford free kick. This, I don't even know if it was checked, but I'm sorry, who who's fouling who? This is apparently Saliba fouling Tone. I see two arms being wrapped around Saliba there. I, I'm just saying, I, I don't think that's a foul. And this, I think this, this is genuinely robbery. Chelsea should be suing. <laughs> How is that not a handball? This is a, a freeze frame, of course. You're not going to get the full picture with a with a picture, but <laughs> a picture with a picture. But if you watch it, genuinely flicks his hand at the ball. I mean, it, it's so glaringly obvious. If you're a football fan and you don't think that's a penalty, you need to watch another sport. I don't care. I'm sorry if that's offensive to you, but you're an idiot. He has literally handled the ball. Doesn't matter if the shot wasn't going in. If even if it is going in and and, and it, it's going to be saved, whatever. It's a penalty. And I would be absolutely fuming. Chelsea, they're not everyone's favourite club right now. They've spent an extortionate amount of money. But no matter who the club are, it doesn't matter, even if it's not in football, when you have such an obvious thing to happen. Like, it's, I'm just staring at his hand right now. It, it's so obvious. And it's not given. And you've just got to question what is going on. Should it be in the sport? Should VAR be used in football when we cannot use it properly. I'm seeing people saying, I saw um, Martin Keown saying, do we need to suspend VAR at this point because it's it's not working for us? And again, you've got to make the distinction. The technology isn't the problem. It's the people using the technology. It's the Lee Masons that sit there, the bald-headed, oh, I hate him, man. He should never, ever referee or be VAR again. Simple as that. It's just not working in this country. And again, my opinion, VAR, the way we use it in this country and in some other competitions, you know, it's not perfect everywhere, but the way it's used in this country is ruining the sport and it should be absolutely reworked. We should absolutely be redoing this because I can't, I can't enjoy football like this. I can't. And it's a sackable offence. There's no way that Lee Mason should still have a job. The amount of money that's on the line. If, if Arsenal go on to lose the title by two points or one point, you could genuinely say Lee Mason cost Arsenal a, a, a Premier League trophy. We haven't won it in two decades. Millions and millions and millions of pounds just on one stupid, stupid human error or whatever. Like... Yes, you can make mistakes in life, but that's not a mistake. That's a calamity. <laughs> it's, it's insane to me that the guy is still going to be hired. He's still going to have a job. You should be walking down to your local Tesco soon and he should be on the tills. That should be his new job. 
just, you know, a, a normal nine to five, whatever. He should not be on VAR ever again. And he will be. And do you know, the, the biggest thing that we, we haven't even covered in this video properly is just that clubs are going to have to start taking legal action. Chelsea should absolutely, and they, I'm sure f they're fuming, you know, that, that was a penalty and potentially a winner. And, you know, they're in such a, a crisis at the moment. You know, it it wouldn't surprise me if in the next few seasons, if, it, if it's still like this, maybe even a few weeks, if this keeps happening, there's going to be class action lawsuits. There, there's going to be mass protests. There's going to be clubs that simply refuse to play football if VAR is in operation. It could genuinely go there. It's not good enough. And I, I just really wanted to talk about it. I hope you've enjoyed the video and my thoughts on everything. I'd love to know your thoughts. I know a lot of people are going to completely disagree with me saying that it shouldn't be in the game. But if you can't get technology right, the technology isn't right for the game. It, it, it can't be. We, we need to operate it properly and look to other leagues that do it better than us. And <laughs> I'm sick of it. I absolutely love the Premier League. I love it. But this weekend, genuinely, has left like a sour taste. It feels unfair. It doesn't feel like a fair sport because clubs are getting away with murder. It's not even Brentford's fault, but they got away with that. They really did. Arsenal should have won that game. It is what it is, I guess. Nothing you can do about it.